Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Jonas, the senior pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Maryville, Tennessee, welcoming you to this week's edition of the Wednesday Word. This past Sunday morning in worship here at First United Methodist Church, as in so many congregations around the world, we observed World Communion Sunday. The first Sunday in October is a time that many denominations set apart as a day to wrap the entire globe in a celebration of Holy Communion. And as part of our celebration, we tried to remember that we're called to be in ministry to all the people of the world, but we also tried to remember that we're called to be in ministry with all the people who are Christians around the world. As part of our message on Sunday morning, we shared a phrase that John Wesley referred to as the Catholic spirit, and he wasn't talking about any particular denomination. He was talking instead about that overwhelming love that we have for God and for each other that causes all those other things that would divide us to diminish in their importance. In writing about the Catholic spirit, John Wesley said this, Is thy heart right as my heart is with thine? I ask no farther question. If it be, give me thy hand. For opinions and terms, let us not destroy the work of God. And we try to remember together on Sunday morning that those opinions and terms are everywhere around us. In fact, you may be watching this video from your social media feed, and if you are, you won't have to scroll very far up or down to see some very strongly stated opinions and terms, especially in this season of a presidential election. And notice the effect of those opinions and terms. Um, in social media, it's so easy to put them out there because we don't have to deal with the face-to-face -face response of someone whom we love or about whom we care. So we can just post an opinion out there and we don't really have to deal with the consequences of it, at least not immediately. But the reverse is also true. When we've posted an opinion out there, if someone offers an opposing view or a contradictory view, we don't have the benefit of seeing their face-to-face -face communication with all of the cues that that might supply so we don't get to see any compassion in their eyes. We don't get to hear a sympathetic tone in their voice. We don't get to see an understanding facial expression, so we're just left with those raw words standing up against our raw words, and we can immediately start to feel defensive about their response. And rather than seeing their response as offered up against our words, we might start to see that those words are offered up against us in person. And so, rather than becoming things that unite us, those opinions and terms very often become things that divide us. And on social media, it becomes very easy to click a little icon that says block and then to end a relationship that, or at least to end a, a social media relationship that we have cherished before perhaps. So those opinions and terms do prove to be pretty divisive. The problem with those opinions and terms is that um, they are simply that. They're things that are ours. Um, in a committee that I was part of in a church setting a few years ago, we decided that maybe we would stop beginning sentences with I want or I like or I prefer because almost anything that follows that kind of beginning to a sentence is something that is coming particularly from us and it may not be good for the entire group of people. But we live so often bound up in our preferences in our opinions, that it's hard for us to step outside of that and to be people of love who want what's best for all. John Wesley urged us to be people of humility about those opinions and terms, and in a sermon that he called the Catholic Spirit, words that he offered up in 1750, Wesley had this to say about those opinions. Although every man necessarily believes that every particular opinion which he holds is true, no man can be assured that all his own opinions taken together are true. What Wesley's saying there is that we think every opinion that we hold is true because we wouldn't hold it otherwise, but it's impossible for us to be assured that all of our opinions, that, that everything that we hold on to and believe is true. And since that's the case, then we have to exercise a little humility about any particular opinion that we hold. I hear in John Wesley's summary there of our opinions a little echo of what the Apostle Paul wrote 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's the beautiful chapter about love, the agape love of God the Father, the agape love of Jesus Christ, the agape love to which we're called in our love for neighbors as we love ourselves. After describing all the virtues of that love, at the end of the chapter, Paul reminds us why we should be humble about what we think we know or why we should be humble about the opinions and terms to which we cling. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12 reads like this, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Humility may be the Wednesday word. Paul's asking his listeners, his readers in this case, to be humble about what we see and what we know and, and what we hold as truth and fact because we are only able to see part of the picture. For Paul to say we see as through a mirror was an even more compelling statement than for you or me to say that we see in a mirror. We know that when we look into the mirror, we're always seeing a mirror image, the opposite of how we appear to other people. So there's already a little inconsistency with what we're seeing versus what they're seeing. But in Paul's day, it might have been an inferior kind of glass, or it might have even been a shiny metal that didn't even yield the clarity of image that we see when we look in our mirrors. And so it's an even more remarkable statement that Paul offers up. Whatever we see is, is as if we're seeing it just dimly through a mirror. We don't see as accurately as God sees, so why would we hold to our opinions and terms and let them become divisive? Why would we let them overwhelm our love for people? Because we don't really know all the truth, and we'll only know truth fully when we're in the presence of God. So humility is key. Earlier in that passage about love, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, there's a critical part of his description of love that I need to remember. In verse 5, Paul says, love does not insist on its own way. Opinions and terms sometimes cause us to insist on our own way. We insist on our opinion over another person's opinion. And if that person doesn't share our opinion, we unfriend, we unfollow. And if we're not careful in our own lives, we might unlove. So today, my Wednesday word is humility. I'm trying to remember not to insist on my own way. I'm trying to embrace that Catholic spirit to be able to say to a person, if your heart's right and my heart's right, give me your hand. Let's be brothers in Jesus Christ. Let's have fellowship in Jesus Christ. Let's walk together in Jesus Christ rather than letting our opinions and terms divide us. Well, I wish you a Catholic spirit today. I pray that you feel the unity with the body of Christ throughout the world. And I pray that you'll be the kind of person who clings to your opinions and terms lightly, knowing that we see only in part and only in the presence of God will we see and understand fully. And until that day, here's what we know. Opinions and terms are things that we hold on to that probably aren't provable. But Jesus Christ had this to say, the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Let your love for others supersede all of your opinions and terms. Thanks for joining me for today's Wednesday Word.